How's it going YouTube? My name is LBNinja7 and this is going to be a video talking about raiding as a Mistweaver in the pre-patch. So a big disclaimer, this is only viable information during pre-patch. So as soon as the War Within drops, I think the 22nd for early release or 26th normal release, then all, most of this information will be become irrelevant because in this pre-patch patch, patch uh, us Mistweavers have our old tier setback. I think this was season two of Dragonflight. So this playstyle that I'm going to be talking about will be heavily abusing this old tier set with some new updates. My intention is to disable this video as soon as the War Within finally drops and this becomes irrelevant. But if you're watching this for some reason after the War Within has dropped, check out my channel for a newer updated version to play Mistweaver. But without further ado, let's get through into this walkthrough. So like I said, the first thing worth mentioning is our tier set. So this is an old tier set designed for how we used to play, but the updated version of something like Manatee makes this very abusable. So our two set increases Renewing Mist, Soothing Mist, and Enveloping Mist healing by 12%, but uh, the four set is what's really broken during this pre-patch uh, time period. So drinking a tea increases the healing of your Vivify and Renewing Mist by 40%. Now notice that it says a T. It doesn't just say um, Thunder Focus T. So let's press Thunder Focus T. We gain the Soul Fang Vitality for six seconds. So our, our Vivifies and Renewing Mist Healing will be boosted by 40% for those six seconds. If we press Fortifying Brew, this is not advised to do, but this is just another way to gain this buff. We get that buff, but let's spend some mana uh, because as Miss Weaver, you know, we have to spend mana to make mana. Let's do um, like one or two stacks of manatee. Just sip manatee and boom, we get six seconds of that as well. So um, just because of that interaction, since they've changed manatee, and on top of that, we're going to be casting a lot of vivifies during the down period of our ramps and also at the end of our ramps. So this also can change how we use our Thunder Focus T during our ramp so instead of starting right before we press Yulon, pressing thunder focus t for a haste buff with secret infusion uh, we can do that still to get more explosive quick starting ramps or um, after we do these enveloping mists or on the final enveloping mist we can thunder focus t that final enveloping mist to then gain the soul thing vitality buff but once again since manatee is working differently with this tier set since we can basically set one stack you can still do the thunder focus t renewing mist to start your ramp cast all of your enveloping mists and then sip one stack of manatee especially if you have like a cancel macro and then get to that vivify spamming to cleave all of those renewing mists now it's important to note that there is an internal cooldown with procking your four piece tier set so you can't proc it wait for that six second durations to end manatee again immediately and get that buff just constant uptime you can't do that there is an internal cooldown so let me show you so we can manatee let's just cancel it by thunder uh, rising sun kicking so we have that buff and then right once it runs out we're gonna press manatee again and we don't get the buff however if we drink manatee once again a few seconds later we do get the buff so there is a slight internal cooldown so you can't just ab abuse it completely have a hundred percent uptime but as you can see you can do it pretty quickly in succession to maintain that renewing mist viv uh, vivify buff for a large uptime throughout a raid fight now without further ado let's get into the build and once again this this build i have been testing a lot very something very similar to this on the war within beta and at the time the tier of mourning you know pure into peace build was just performing a lot better because our war within tier set buffs enveloping the ceiling a lot more and so did the the hero talent trees but since we're in pre-patch we don't have access to hero talent tree and we are using an old outdated tier set so um we're gonna play a build that abuses that tier set so what we do is we try to maintain as high of a renewing mist count as possible now as some of you guys already know something like invigorating mist does have square root scaling or it is square root scaled so your sixth target will receive less healing than your fifth target and uh, so on and so forth so down to your 20th target will receive 50% of the fifth target. So if you have 20 renewing miss out, you're still going to be doing more healing than if you had 19, but that 20th person will receive slightly less healing than the 19th 
so on and so forth all the way up. However, the rest of the kit, other than that, doesn't really punish you at all for having a high renewing mist count. In fact, the new Zen Pulse, the new passive Zen Pulse, is not capped, is not soft capped or square root scaled. It just does a chunk yield to everyone with renewing mist, and it also rewards you for having more renewing mist out. So this will be proccing often, especially since we can force it to proc with deep clarity, and we're gonna be getting good AOB cleaving healing from that. Now the core structure to this build is actually built around one old talent that we would play around a ton, as well as two new talents coming in the War Within, um, but have now hit the game because of pre-patch. Those new talents are Lotus Infusion and Pool of Mists, which by the way, if you want my Pool of Mists weak or I guess my face is blocking it. I guess I can uh, turn that off for a second. Uh, boom, That those three green lines, if you want that, I'll have a link in my Discord. So just join my Discord, grab that weak aura, um, and then bounce if you want to. But um, it plays around Pool of Mists, it plays around Lotus Infusion and Rising Mist. Now Rising Mist can extend your Renewing Mists or your Enveloping Mist by four seconds every time that you Rising Sun Kick. So if we have an Enveloping Mist on ourself, you can watch the duration, watch this duration in the top left corner. If I Rising Sun Kick, it adds four seconds to that duration. Now you can't infinitely extend all of your hots that way. Um, however, each time that you Rising Sun Kick, it's gonna add four seconds and you can up to double the base duration of one of your hots. So uh, Renewing Mist, it lasts six seconds. We can buff that up to seven seconds thanks to Mist Wrap, and we can then extend that to up to 14 seconds with Rising Mists. However, what's really unique with, with Rising Mists and why it's getting pretty powerful, um, well, it's always been powerful, don't get me wrong, but it's getting even more powerful in the War Within with a build like this, is Lotus Infusion. Lotus Infusion is a brand new talent, so it says allies with Renewing Mist receive 8% more healing from you and Renewing Mist duration is increased by two seconds. So what's really special about this is normally Renewing Mist is a 20 second hot, but now if you talent into Lotus Infusion, it becomes a 22 second hot, meaning that it extends the base duration of Renewing Mist hot, and Rising Mist can then extend it further. So just like if you have Enveloping Mist and you talent into Mist Wrap, it goes from six to seven seconds and can be doubled to 14 seconds, Rising Mist works with Lotus Infusion to where it becomes, Renewing Mist becomes a 22 second hot that can be extended to a 20 or a 44 second hot. So you're just basically adding four possible more seconds onto your Renewing Mist by taking this talent and um, adding 20 up to 22 seconds to a Renewing Mist with something like Rising Mist. And where this, this uh, just gets absolutely out of hand, this build can get out of, out of hand, is because a talent like Pool of Mist allows you to have so many more active Renewing Mists at a time because every time that you cast Renewing Mist, you're shaving a second off of your Rising Sun Kick. And every time that you cast your Rising Sun Kick, you're shaving a second off of your Renewing Mist. And then to top all of that off, you're gaining an additional charge of Renewing Mist. So all of a sudden, this talent almost alone mixed with Rising Mist can just cause your Renewing Mist count to be kind of absurd, like push it way to the next level, um, which gets really insane with this current tier set um, because it's, it's, it's increasing the healing of your Renewing Mists but also your vivifies if you drink a tea. So as you can see, all of this really comes together to make a very broken iteration of Mistweaver. But once again, I have to harp on this. This is a very limited time version of Mistweaver. That's not why I'm making a full extended guide because I don't want to fool anyone to making uh, them think that this is like official and this is going to be what it's like in the War Within because it's not. But before we finally get to the rotation or just some of the, the sequences that you can get yourself into, I do also want to mention that uh, Pool of Mists also, how whenever you cast a Renewing Mist to reduce your Rising Sun Kick by a second, uh, this also works with talents like Rapid Diffusion. Rapid Diffusion, every time you Rising Sun Kick or Enveloping Mist, uh, you you put a Renewing Mist onto a random ally. So sorry, I'll, I moved my camera. Let's Rising Sun Kick and see if that free Renewing Mist uh, reduces the, the timer of Rising Sun Kick by a second. So if it does, you'll see the cooldown show as eight seconds because it'll go from 8.6 to 7.6 and round up to just show eight. If it doesn't, it'll show nine seconds. So let's Rising Sun Kick. 
and you see it shows nine. So that free renewing mist from your rising sun kick from rapid diffusion does not just freely reduce uh, your rising sun kick's cooldown by a second. However, one very cool thing that does is the renewing mist from enveloping mist. So every time you cast an enveloping mist, you're also getting a free short duration renewing mist. But uh, that renewing mist, that copy of renewing mist does actually proc pool of mists, reducing your rising sun kick cooldown by a second. So let's rising sun kick, and I'm just going to spam enveloping mist and watch the rising sun kick timer. You see it tick down every time one of those casts goes off. It's because we're getting a free renewing mist out, and it's it's thus reducing the cooldown. So I'm going to do it one more time just to show you. But then this time I'm going to be casting my renewing mist charges, my three renewing mist charges. So boom. And let's cast Renewing Mist, Renewing Mist, and Renewing Mist. You see, we're just ticking time away from that timer. So a lot of your downtime is actually playing around these interactions. So you're going to be um, casting Rising Sun Kick as soon as it comes off cooldown. This is your best spell. This spell, this cast, does your most healing because it not only comes with a six-second duration Renewing Mist, but it also adds four seconds to almost all of your hots unless it's already fully extended one. So you can just imagine that all adds up to a ton of healing because then any vivifies that you cast that cleave into an extended hot from casting Rising Sun Kick, um, you can add that healing to, to be contributed to the, the Rising Sun Kick that you pressed you know, however much time ago. Sorry if I'm confusing you for that, but all that to say... Rising Sun Kick is the top of your priority list unless unless you are currently in a Yulon ramp. So during your downtime, as soon as Rising Sun Kick comes off, you press it, and then outside of that, you want to be using your Renewing Mist charges to try to reduce that cooldown of your Rising Sun Kick to get it off even faster. You want to be casting Vivifies around to get a lot of cleave healing, and then pressing Rising Sun Kick as soon as it comes off cooldown. Uh, renewing Mist, Vivifies on anyone that needs spot healing, and then Rising Sun Kick, Renewing Mist, and then you can even cast, if you have no Renewing Mist charges, you can even cast Enveloping Mist, especially if everyone is close to full health, and casting Vivify would just lead to a bunch of overhealing. It's absolutely okay for you to cast an Enveloping Mist during that downtime, but just know most of your globals are going to be going into the three spells Vivify, Renewing Mist, and 100% Rising Sun Kick, but adding into that, you also do want to be sipping on your Manatee enough to keep Soul Fang Infusion up for a good amount of time. So if we uh, if we Rising Sun Kick, right after that Rising Sun Kick, we can sip Manatee, cast Vivify, Renewing Mist, you know, Renewing Mist on three different targets, Rising Sun Kick, sip Manatee once again, Vivify, Vivify, cast an Enveloping Mist on someone, Renewing Mist, Rising Sun Kick, sip Manatee. So as you see, this, this core rotation, it will lead to a ton of Rising Sun Kick casts, it will lead to a ton of Renewing Mist casts, and it will lead to a ton of healing thanks to your tier set, and not just your tier set, but that boosted healing on your Renewing Mists and all of your Vivifies that are cleaving onto everyone. It is very important to note that you are a melee healer, you're just coded in the game as melee healer, nothing that you do can change that. Um, however, in this play style, you especially need to always be in melee right up against the boss um, and ready to rising sun kick when you need to. That is why we take talents uh, like rushing reflexes, because if you roll toward a boss and you land within 10 yards of them, it will snap you to that boss, getting you um, or letting you be able to rising sun kick more often. You can even use the double jump, which I'm blocking. Uh, you can use the double jump from lighter than air to close some distance or you can use your vivacious vivification procs um, whenever you have that available to to cast one vivify on the move if you just need to close a little bit of distance um, also don't be afraid to use tiger's lust to kind of sprint toward the boss if you need to but always 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 make sure that you are within melee range as soon as that rising sun kick, uh, comes off cooldown because that will be your biggest increase to HPS. Finally, I want to talk about your ramp. So your Yulon ramp, um, it's going to look very similar to a Yulon ramp that you're used to, except there are some changes. After the enveloping miscasts, 
you are going to cast a rising sun kick so that means that what when you start your renewing mist or i'm sorry when you start your yulon ramp you want to make sure that you are in melee range of the boss or at least where it will be in a couple seconds uh, that way you're able to cast rising sun kick right all after your yulon ramp you also have the option to save your thunder focus t toward the end of your ramp um, if you do want to use that to boost um, or to give yourself soul fang infusion from your tier set or you can just do what you're used to, which I would actually recommend this, even if it's a, an HPS loss in the meantime during pre-patch. I would recommend still using your Thunder Focus T at the beginning of your ramps, since that's very likely what we're going to be doing in the War Within, just to keep that muscle memory. However, just know that that's an option um, to give yourself that buff at the end of your ramp so your Vivifies are stronger. You also, if you do use Thunder Focus T at the beginning of your ramp on a Renewing Mist to get a haste buff, you can use Mana T um, for like one second. I only recommend doing this if you have a, a macro to stop your manatee channel um, so that you can just sip it for one second to gain soul fang vitality and then get to your vivifies because boosting it but boosting your vivifies by 40 percent from that buff will lead to more overall healing however that is 100 honestly not that necessary so what your yulon ramp looks like is you are going to use your uh, you want to make sure that you don't sit at three charges of Renewing Mist during your Yulon Ramp. So ideally a couple seconds before you start your Yulon Ramp, you want to empty your tank, meaning that you want to use your Rising Sun Kick. I should uh, swap to the bottom left. Uh, you want to use your Rising Sun Kick and as many Renewing Mist charges as you can. That way, once again, you're not just sitting there at three stacks of re Renewing Mist. Um, so you want to use, let's see, Renewing Mist, Renewing Mist, however many Rising Sun Kick, but then let's finally start the actual ramp. Once again, we're going to Shailun's Gift to give ourselves the Shao's Lesson buff. We're then going to Thunder Focus T. This is variable. Use it whenever you want to, however you want to set up your ramp. Uh, you're going to Thunder Focus T, Renewing Mist, and then we're going to start our ramp. So Yulon, Enveloping Mist, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to Rising Sun Kick to extend all of those Renewing Mists. And then from there, we can just spam around Vivifies. Now, I, I, I want to note that I am personally taking Soothing Mist. So, um, yes, it's good to spam around Vivifies on whoever needs the most healing in the moment. Um, however, just know that with this build that I'm linking in the description below, I do have Soothing Mist Talented. You can still lock to a target and just spam Vivifies into them quicker however it's not advised since we no longer have clouded focus um, i would honestly just advise that you spam around your vivifies on whoever need them but you're just going to cast vivifies until um, all the healing is done and that is the end of your ramp it looks very similar to ramps in in times past using your buffs of thunder focus t and shao's lesson for haste and hopefully crit or something good from shao's lesson before your ramp casting yulon getting that invoker's delight uh, haste buff, spamming enveloping mist to blanket the party and enveloping breath, and then um, either using like one stack of manatee if you want to boost it even further to get um, soul fang vitality, or if you saved your thunder focus T, getting that buff then from that. Casting a rising sun kick to extend all those hots and then spamming vivifies uh, to just capitalize on all that healing with cleaving from invigorating mist, hopefully a zen, zen pulse proc or two. Um, but that is the gist of the build this is a very difficult build to, to to like play i've been playing it for months on on the war within beta and i still don't think i've fully mastered it however the the throughput capability of this build in pre-patch thanks to the tier set and thanks to us being able to kind of abuse that tier set lead to just like insane healing uh let's go to healing done um so i've done a couple of bosses today and all of them are looking pretty nutty i mean look at that 425,000 000 hps and, and that's with like five or six healers i'm sure you can top that even further but i mean like our, our throughput potential is there it is there i've seen some people saying that they've they i saw one person say they ruined mist weaver i don't think so um i think this build is crazy especially thanks to the tier set once again you can also opt to not go with soothing mist soothing mist does technically have a use case if you know you're going to need to spam vivifies into one person then soothing mist is a good option because it can just make it more efficient to, to cast 
two or three or even four vivifies into the same person. However, once again, thanks to the cloud of focus being removed, we no longer do that that often, but some of you might've spotted it. I am running smoldering seedlings since it's like one of the only trinkets I have on retail right now. Um, so that's the only reason why I'm running Soothemist, but feel very free to talent out of this. If you don't find yourself casting it, you can take any of these other talents that you find are best. Like if you're on Sarkareth, you can take Tiger Tail Sweep to just make yourself safer to stop the ads or, you know, something random there. I don't really know what the best one would be. Maybe if you're getting slowed, uh, quick footed. Um, but yeah, you can drop Soothing Mist. Other than that, I think this talent tree is pretty locked in. And finally, the last thing I'm going to talk about before I let you guys go is Haste is your best friend with this build. Um, not only does Haste reduce the actual cooldown of your Rising Sun Kick, that's why mine shows 8.6 seconds, yours might show something different on the cooldown, so that alone is a great reason to do that, but having more Haste, um, it's kind of like a self-perpetuating cycle with Pool of Mists, reducing uh, your timer of your your rising sun kick and your renewing mist so the more haste you have the more you can kind of abuse that also drinking manatee is hasted so there are a lot of things that having haste just boosts in this build but once again guys this is not a 100 percent fleshed out guide this is just going to show you guys how to get started in pre-patch things might change they might even nerf this tier set like next week or something I don't know, so don't put like too much stock into this. Also, things are 100% gonna change by the time that the War Within comes out, and I will have a much more in-depth guide on how to play Mistweaver in Raid once that time comes. I already have the script. I've had to edit it like 10 times because I keep nerfing stuff and buffing stuff. But I will have that, that ready for you guys with much better quality than this video. But hopefully this just this just gives you some ground to stand on to get your, you know, to dip your feet in or get your toes wet. I don't know what the saying is, but hopefully this helped you. Uh, but guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much to you for watching it and for supporting me during this downtime and content with World of Warcraft. You guys know how it is. But also thank you to the patrons for keeping literally my lights on. So thank you guys so much for all the support. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, go crank that meter.